Hello, my name is Jason Janessa. Welcome to the first edition of the RF Switch. I'm here to introduce to you the Hori Gamepad for the GameCube and Game Boy Play. Everybody may know Hori for making the replica fight sticks. Well, this piece of equipment was released on March 18th of 2003. It, it does a decent job of replicating the layout of the Super Nintendo controller. It's pretty light. It's just a bit smaller than the Super Nintendo controller, and as you see, it has the button layout of the GameCube controller. You also have your little R and L buttons, and you've got your D-pad. Uh, it came in two different colors when it was released. It came in black and it came in indigo, but obviously I have the black controller. Uh, they've become pretty rare since its release, but when you find them online you're gonna look at prices anywhere between forty and a hundred dollars and it can get kinda of ridiculous but when I bought it I bought it at, at its original price for fourteen ninety nine I'm sorry to put that out there um, anyway it's pretty light to hold uh, you a nice little feature is the convex areas at the end and unless you got really big hands you're not gonna have to worry about your hands getting cramped up the buttons on on Moshi or anything, they click pretty well. Uh, the response time for the on-screen action is timed pretty well. You're not going to look at it any real lag. The Horror Gamepad was designed for use with the Game Boy Player on the GameCube. All game titles from the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance are compatible with this controller. But it can also be used with 3D games such as Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, and Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex. It can also be used with 2D game collections such as Sonic Gems Collection, Mega Man Anniversary Collection, and Capcom vs. SNKEO, but I don't have any of those games so I won't be able to show you the gameplay for that. But I must do an honorable mention of the original Zelda and Zelda 2 that are located on the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition. But not with Ocarina of Time, nor Majora's Mask, obviously. So, from this point on, I'll show you a little bit of gameplay with the controller. Well, here we go. I'm going to show you the gameplay. I got the controller hooked up. I got my GameCube on. And in the Game Boy Player, I have my copy of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. And here we go. Now, as you see, the action buttons are pretty responsive, no real lag. Well, no real, no lag at all, really. But it's pretty responsive, the D-pad works. I'm kind of getting my butt kicked here, though. Hopefully I can find a hop. And, well, I found a map! There we go. We have the gameplay. And as you see, it works pretty darn well. I love this controller. Now for the pros and cons. The pros, it gives you a nice little hint of nostalgia due to it looking just like the Super NES controller. Uh, it's light and comfortable to hold. Thank goodness for the uh, convex ends. It's, the controls are very, very responsive. They click back really good, and they're not really they're not mushy at all. And the final good thing about this controller is, like I said before, you can play all Game Boy titles: the original Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance, and even a couple of the 3D GameCube games. Uh, the cons. I really can't think of any cons. I, I thought one of my cons were going to be the layout of the action buttons, like the X, Y, B, and A buttons, but it, it's not a deal breaker. I, I, I would have just preferred the layout of the S and the S, but may, maybe it would have been like a copyright thing. I don't know. But the other con to this thing is the price. 
When you find this thing online at, say, Amazon or eBay, you're going to be paying $40 to $100 for this. And it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but other than that, it's a great controller. I love this thing. I would not give this thing up for anything in the world. Not even a million dollars. Maybe that's a bit exaggerative, but so what? I love this thing. It's a great controller. Now, if you do want to spend the pretty penny, make sure you have the games that you're going to play with it for the Game Boy Player. Because if you don't and you're just going to collect it, maybe you're just a regular collector. But in the end, I give this thing a 9.5 out of 10. I love this thing. And thank you very much for joining me on my review. This is Jason Janess, and have a good night.